In today's linear algebra video, I'm going to be covering the determinant, be going over some of the properties associated with it, and then going over some manual calculations with a two by two, as well as a three by three matrix. After that, we're going to jump into some Python code. We're going to utilize NumPy and calculate the determinant in literally just one line of code, and then go through some of those other properties that I'm going to be teaching you guys about shortly. So with that out of the way, let's start learning about what a determinant is. All right, let's uh, look at more information about the determinant. So first, this is a scalar value that is computed from the elements of a square matrix. If the determinant of a matrix is zero, that means the matrix is gonna be singular, which essentially means there is gonna be no inverse associated with it. And then on the identity matrix, which I have a full video on identity matrix, if you wanna learn a little bit more, that's the one where the left to right diagonal is all one, everything else is zero. Uh, the determinant is going to be one every time for an identity matrix. Now, here's a few other the properties I thought that were worth mentioning. Uh, the determinant of a product of matrices satisfies this equation, right? The determinant of A times B equals determinant A times determinant B. Uh, swapping two rows or columns of a matrix multiplies the determinant by negative one. And scaling a matrix by a scalar, K multiplies its determinant by k raised to the n power, where n is the matrix dimension. Also, the determinant of a matrix equals the products of its eigenvalues. And if any eigenvalue is zero, the determinant is zero, which indicates singularity. And once again, there is going to be no inverse. So here's another interesting thing, right? So if the determinant is zero, the system of linear equations represented by ax equals b has no unique solution which either means there's no solutions available or there's infinitely amount of solutions. It depends on the value of B. And if the determinant is not zero, the matrix is invertible, which means there is going to be the inverse, right? And the system has a unique solution associated with it. So let's take a look at a, examples of a two by two, as well as a three by three. Um, I'm going to label the, the matrix like this, A, B, C, D. So here's how you perform the calculation. Uh, you do A times D, right? And then you minus B times C. So here's with some numbers. So four times six, 24. Seven times two is 14. So 24 minus 14, our final answer is 10. Two by two, cake. Uh, three by three gets a little bit more difficult, right? So first, what we're going to do is we're going to take A and then we're going to multiply it by the determinant of E, I, F, H, right? Then we're going to subtract B and we're going to take a look at the determinant of DF, right? So we're skipping this middle now. So DF, GI. And lastly, we're going to add the C times and we take this square. So if you think about it, right, we have the top part A, we take this square. B, right, we ignore what's underneath it and we create a new square. And then C, we go over here and use that square on that side of things. So to see this in action, right? What we're going to do is go across the board. So first, what we're going to do is find the determinant of 6, 9, 5, 2, right? That's going to be negative 33. Next, we're going to find the determinant of 4, 9, 7, 2, right? That is going to be negative 55. And then we're going to find the determinant of this 4, 6, 7, 5. And uh, we get the value of negative 22, right? 4 times 5 minus 6 times 7. Okay, awesome. Now let's multiply these. So first, right, this 6952, we're going to multiply that by 3. So 3 times negative 33, we get negative 99. Now we're going to subtract 8 times the determinant of the other 4, which I do right here. And then we're going to add 1 times the determinant of this over here. So we sum all of this together and we get the final solution of 319. So with this context out of the way, I think it's time to start coding in Python. So uh, get your code editor ready or notebook and let's get started. All right, so let's get started. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use import numpy as np. And then so I don't have to put linalg through the video. I'm gonna say from numpy.linalg import det. And then uh, we're off to the races. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through a two by two example. So we'll go by two by two and then we'll go into a three by three. Uh, so we'll just call this matrix one. So matrix one equals np.array 
and let's define our matrix. So I use the same values as the video four, seven, and then I'll go two, six, so two, six. Uh, that way we get the value of 10. So we have that over here and then we'll calculate the determinant. So matrix one DET equals, and all I have to have it here is DET and then pass in matrix. Um, if you don't have linalg, you'll have to put np.linalg and DET. That's why I just had this over here. And then just pass in matrix one, right? And uh, print this out, so prints, and we'll pass that in over here. And you can see the value is gonna be 10. Um, nothing really too special, right? Just DET, pass in your matrix and you're done. Um, we'll do a three by three, right? Which I don't know why I copied and pasted that. It's literally just me retyping it. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do for our three by three is we'll say matrix two, matrix two equals np.array, so np.array, then pass in our array. So we're gonna do three rows, so three, eight, one for our first row, then our second row is gonna be four, six, nine, and then lastly for our last row is seven, five, two, so seven, five, and two. Uh, we have that over here. And again, literally it's like the same exact code. I hate when that happens over there with the comments, but uh, matrix two, right? Pass in matrix two. And then if we wanted to print this out, this should be the same number as this was in the slide, unless I change any of the numbers, but uh, should be like what, 133? Oh, sorry, 319. Um, yeah, so we have that over here. And uh, again, just essentially two lines of code. We have define our array, determine it. Um, but like, I don't wanna just have this as a video, you know, oh, here's this. So I wanted to go through all these different properties and show you how that works. So we'll go through the singular matrix first. So singular matrix. And all we'll over here is matrix singular, right? I will say this is equal to np.array. And inside over here, We'll pass in these values. I already tested this beforehand, so I know it works. So four and two, like that. Uh, so we'll calculate the determinant on this side of things. So matrix DET singular, T singular equals DET, then pass in our matrix singular, right? We're gonna get a value of zero. So uh, print this out and see nothing, right? Awesome, so we know that's working there. And now what we wanna do is we wanna find the inverse of this. Uh, you can't, right? Because it's zero, but just to show you np.linalg inverse, and then pass in uh, matrix singular. And uh, you'll see we'll get an error, right? And it says singular matrix, because we can't find the inverse of that. And uh, just to show you once again, that worked properly. So awesome, that proved that. Uh, let's take a look at an identity matrix. So identity matrix. Now I already have the identity video out, I believe on the channel by the time this is out, but uh, we'll say I equals NP dot identity and then pass in the size. I'm just gonna do a three by three. Uh, there's two ways to define this. You could also do EYE, I like that. No pun intended. Uh, I don't like that way of doing it. I just prefer identity. Uh, we can do a determinant of I equals, and then just BET, pass in I like that. And if you remember that property, right? I did C matrix, the determinant will always be one. So print out that uh, determinant like that. And boom, we have the value of one. Now I wanted to go through the next slide. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy uh, what I have over here. So the product of matrices satisfies determinant AB equals determinant A times determinant B. So we're gonna have to define two matrices. Uh, so we'll have A equals NP dot array. And inside over here, we'll have two, one, and then three, four. So three, four, like that. Awesome. And then we'll have B. And we'll have for B over here is zero, five, six, seven. So zero, five, six, seven, like that. Uh, one thing I did want to do, and I kind of skipped over it just to save some time with this code, is calculate the determinant. So we'll say DET of A, like that equals DET A, just 
pass that in. Do the same thing for B. And then we'll just print them out just to show you what these values are um, because we're going to use A and B uh, for the next few examples. Well, for sure in this one, we'll use A for the next few examples. So uh, let's print out this value. So we'll print out the determinant of A and you'll see the value is five. We print out B's value, right? Let's print this out and you get negative 29. So now what we want to do is find the value of determinant AB. So we'll say determinant AB, right? AB like that equals, and we'll say DET, and then inside over here, we'll say NP dot dot, and then pass an AB. And you'll see the value prints is negative 150. And really, um, five times negative 30, that's also negative 150. I don't think I need to show you the math behind that one. Um, but we proved that this property works correctly. Uh, now what I want to do is go over swapping rows. So swapping two rows or columns, uh, you'll find that the determinant is multiplied by negative one. So what we'll have it here is a swapped equals np dot array, and then what we're going to do is pass in those values. So uh, this time we'll have three, four, two, one, right? We're swapping these rows and two, one like that. And we'll get a determinant a swapped equals det a swapped. And we should be getting a value of negative five because our determinant of a was five. So print determinant a swapped. And you'll see we get the value of negative five. All right. And now we're going to look at some eigenvalues. So eigenvalues of a and their product. Uh, so they need to multiply to be five, right? So we'll say eigenvalue just like that of A. Uh, we're not caring about the vectors in this case. So we'll say that's equal to np.lin alg and then dot eig pass in A over here. And then what we can take a look at now is the product of these. Uh, just to show you what this looks like, right? We have an array one and five. Uh, we can find the product easy. Um, so we'll say eigenvalues a prod equals np dot prod. Pass in these values. Right? So pass those in over here. And then print this out like that. And we get the value of five. Right? These uh, eigenvalues multiply is going to equal the determinant of the matrix. Awesome. And lastly, we want to take a look at scaling a matrix, right? So scale A by a scalar K and then compute the determinant. And we I showed you that formula on here. So we'll say first, uh, we're going to scale A by three. So we'll say K equals three. So we'll say scaled A equals K times A, right? And just a refresher on both, both uh, A looks like. If you go over here to print A, you'll see a two, one, three, four. And then if we print out over here, scaled A, right? Uh, it's going to be that multiplied by three. So six, three, nine, 12. Awesome. So now what we want to do is find the determinant. So determinant scaled A equals, and then we'll say DET, pass in our scaled A, and you'll see that we uh, get the value of 45, right? And let me just print that out first. Print our determinant as scaled A. All right. So Determinant scaled A, we see as 45. And just to refresh you on the, what the value of A was, uh, that would be just determinant A like this. I think it was capitalized A, and that was fine. So we see a multiple of nine associated with it. Uh, here's the equation if we wanted to see it scaled without having to go through the whole process again. So we'll say scaled determinant equals, and inside over here we have K. We raise it to the shape of the the square matrix, which I'll explain this code in a second. So a shape of zero, and then we're going to multiply this by the original determinant. So determinant of a like that. And why oh, it's taking a little bit long to run, but I print this out now and you see it's 45. Now 
And this gives us the shape of our matrix. It's square, so both sides are gonna be the same, right? It's gonna be two for each. And you can see that this prints out two, uh, but to show you a shape, uh, this will print out a tuple at the size. Uh, important to note because later on in the series, we'll be going through more rectangular uh, matrices, but why we're just grabbing zero, right? You could grab either one of these. Um, doesn't really matter. We're, it's again, it's a square, but yeah, that covers uh, the determinant. So really it's a line of code once you import in numpy to lin out uh, determinant and uh, two by two, three by three. Remember singular matrix, um, if you find the value of zero, you can't find the inverse. I know this isn't the inverse video, but it's probably gonna be after this in the series, I would believe. And uh, it throws an error if you get that determinant of zero and try to run the inverse. Density is always gonna be one. And then we went over a few of these different properties. So yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something new about the determinant or it cleared up any confusion. If it did for you, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're uploading two to four data science focused videos every single week. Now, if you wanna learn even more about linear algebra, I'm gonna link a few videos down below. And then here's a playlist that I'm creating right now.